MechWarrior 5 Clans is coming out this year. At GDC, PGI provided a new gameplay trailer as well as 10 minutes of unedited gameplay footage for people to have a look at. And of course, we're going to watch all of that and talk about it. And let's see what is going on with the new MechWarrior title. Let's start with the trailer for MechWarrior 5 Clans. You five are the final vestiges of our brood, who some deem might one day be of value to the clan. I am not one of them. To me, you five are the excrement of a failed semi-aborted batch from my bloodhouse. Far from the pinnacle of humanity demanded by the clan's geneticist that spawned you! Just show me what those Stravics on Lunderholm taught you. Commencing a scan of the area. Show me what you know of being a real true-born mech warrior. And prove yourselves worthy of the name and heritage you carry with you. Prepare for mech combat. That was beautiful. Let's go quickly through a couple of scenes I want to talk about before we then jump into the gameplay, which has basically the scenes from those trailers in it. Um, what I found is super interesting is a new way of storytelling, and I hope that this is now going to be also between the missions. Um, it's going to be revealed, that I talked about later as well, that uh, MechWarrior 5 Clans is going to feature a new way of storytelling. MechWarrior 5 Mercenaries, the previous game, was focusing a lot on procedurally generated content. It had some storytelling elements, it had, it had a single player campaign, but it always felt like, like a little bit lackluster. That was later on corrected with DLCs like Legend of the Castro Lances, for example, that were a lot more story driven, but it looks like they are going to go for a completely story driven approach here, which means, of course, that presentation is going to be key. You want to f see those, those people that are going to be in your star of uh, of uh, clan warriors yeah we're not doing lances anymore four man lances five man stars on the clan side so keep that in mind so you gotta want to get to know these guys you want to get to know their personalities and that is going to be very important that that is presented in a good way it's no no more pictures with text to read it needs to be hitting like that clip and then i think we would have an outstanding campaign by the way yeah this is just this is all ttb yes absolutely that's me that's me. After all the 10,000 rounds of Potato Potato in Mac Warrior Online. Okay, I don't want to talk about this any further. Let's go ahead, jump straight into the gameplay demo, and we will watch it together, and I will talk a little bit about what I'm seeing and uh, what kind of new things we can expect. So let's go. B-roll footage from March 2024 GDC demo. Early stage work in progress. This apparently is the current game screen that the game starts with. And here we go ahead, jumping right into a drop. Familiar sound if for the Mac Warrior Online players. That's the sound of the Mac Warrior Online dropship. Online. Sensors online. Weapons online. All systems phenomenal. Jaguar Actual, we have touchdown. So quiet. Is anyone getting first rules? change I'm seeing? Aside from the UI, Not animated yet. portraits. We're going, we're going Wing Commander Five style. We have no idea what these of almost video-like representations for of people on our star, Jaguar which is actual. great to see, because that helps build no better character, of the course. Three drop ships at Nav Point Alpha, Union class. And already Are you see active? more focus on on story-driven missions. Hey. No fusion reactor activity. And they're taking time to tell that story. If this was MechWarrior 5 Mercs, your screen would be exploding right now, and you would be in a huge fight. Here, they're slowing it down a little bit, which is also very important for storytelling. You want those frantic fights, but you also want to slow it down a little bit if you're telling story. If you're, you want people to appreciate the layout of the maps and everything, and you can't do that if you're fighting for your life. So this is nice. It reminds me of the old MechWarrior games, MechWarrior 4 Mercs, for example, where you had these, like, walking around, scanning stuff, going to nav points, and then boom it hits, right? Let's talk real quick about the new UI. 
Second scan complete, Jaguar. This seems to be, by the way, on PC, because uh, interact, tap, exit, scan, and whatnot. This seems to be played on PC right now. We're seeing our paper doll Still here, no front, back, Shadow Cat. We have the shoot. weapons on the right hand side. Star Commander Plus weapon Jaden. group pips, of course. I need your star to keep scouting ahead. No more pips We're picking up, some activity up front at the, at the UI that I can see. Of course, Jaguar this is Actual all not final, but um, this is a step back for Macware 5 Mercs. I would like to see the cooldown pips right at the crosshair, because that is a great change that they made in Macware 5 Mercs. So I don't know why they're going back here with that. By the way, up, huge new change. Something that we players of Macware 5 Mercs have been asking for forever. The ability to give our guys commands on a map this is even better because it's not a map it's actually just zooming zooming out into bird's eye view of what's going on and then you can send your guys around and give them commands so that is going to be nice if the ai which was a huge problem with macquarie 5 mercs is up to scruff and is going to be good then this is going to be a godsend and should be really really cool so we see our shadow cat here two clearly medium lasers and the gauss rifle actually we also see the ranges so the clan Gauss Rifle, interestingly enough, it's showing a number. The lasers don't show that number, so that is the amount of ammo that you have. And then you can also see your range brackets, in this case lasers up to 400 meters, and the Gauss at 660 meters. Crosshair, of course, once again showing the distance to target. On the right side of the crosshair, we have the heat scale, uh, which is currently in uh, that, that clan green-bluish color. Um, I would like that heat scale to be dynamic get redder as it heats up because it's just much easier and better to see engages of igor um vtols right here these guys are kind of dangerous with their four ac2s they can hurt over time yeah we still have constructible terrain of course which is nice this is great i love this pgi well done one of the main points of criticism for mech warrior 5 mercs was that Enemies just sometimes just spawned in right in front of you and whatnot. Using these kinds of elevators and whatnot to spawn them in is just much better for immersion. So if they can keep that going, very nice. Looking forward to that. And again, look, you just add the portrait of, of the guy. You have it voiced. It just it just feels good. It also means that all the mission descriptions, all the mission briefings, of course, need to be voiced and need to be made in a way that is immersive and interesting. Hopefully an in-game graphic or with a little video or whatnot. Oh, and by the way, yeah, they need to work on the zoom a little bit because that huge um, arc that they're walking through right now is kind of invisible for the camera. And the voice acting needs some work. By Karansky, no! Is it is it weird that I would like to play as Dinosphere for you guys? <laughs> What I'm currently covering is the health and current orders of the mechs in our lands. We can see we have a Shadow Cat, SHC, then Arctic Cheetah, MLX, it's a Mistlings, KFX, Kit Fox, and VPR Viper. And of course these guys can all be ordered to do stuff with the F buttons on the PC or of course with the radio menu on the uh, consoles. We also see the health of our friends right here objectives on the left hand side and of course we also have a heading again which is basically a compass that has 360 degrees which is great for telling people what's going on uh, and where you can see that the radar interestingly enough is going to be centered down low which is kind of the mech warrior online layout will not show the terrain anymore by the way at least in its current iteration This is also great because the map is just the battlefield from top down. That means that it's always up to date. So if you destroy an outpost or whatever, that thing is going to be smoking. Love that. This is really cool. Like I said, the ability to just order your people around on the map with like a little strategy layer. Really nice. We've been asking for that forever. It's nice to see that they're adding that into the game now. Also, of course, the Shadowcat is going to have the ability to shoot, um, do melee combat. If you look at the right hand corner clan medium hand and lower arm these are going to be melee weapons 70 meters range and we see that the shadow cat currently has no ecm equipped but a beagle active probe and mask of course for the extra sprints we saw that a couple of times in this demo as well
I'm not 100% happy with the current UI that they're showing in terms of like the, the, the reticle as well as the heat and everything else. I think that could, could use a little bit of work still. Um, especially the cooldown pips. I, I would be missing them if they are not at my crosshair. Um, the rest of the stuff we'll have to see. Of course, this is early footage, maybe even alpha footage. So this stuff can, of course, still change. And... Uh, if, if, it, if this is the current status and it hasn't changed yet, that my personal opinion, I would recommend PGI reach out to some of the mod creators for MechWarrior 5 Mercenaries, because there have been some great mods out there for UI that I think uh, parts of those could make their way in here to just further improve on it, right? That way we can get like a kick-ass UI out of the uh, get-go. Alright, now Lance is fighting some targets. I also saw earlier that you can actually design cues for targets. So you can tell your Lance mates, kill this guy first, then this guy, then this guy, which is great. So you could, if you have target information beforehand, set up a queue beforehand and then just work through that queue, which is really, really good. So you can go by priority target, which is nice. That is a nice add. WASD to move the camera. Mouse wheel zooms. And of course, kicking around is gonna send your landsmates around. This is the final push now. What I'm seeing from the gameplay so far looks good. The question would be how many of these missions are we gonna get? Because um, if it's this is gonna be a standalone game, right? So I would say ten missions like a Mech Warrior Five DLC are not gonna be enough. Like clans would need to give us a nice long campaign by the way also really nice as they're shooting the lasers you can see like a little bit of like uh, steam or smoke coming from the mechs to showcase like the the, the heat dissipation or the, the heat generated by those mechs what i don't like yet are the trails of the missiles that look a little bit bland but uh, the lasers are much more beefy than the mech War 5 mercs and that also looks good i'm seeing a lot of good things here and uh Valisek will pay for what he did here today. Yeah. I mean, this makes me happy about Mech Warrior 5 clans this year. Like, uh, there's some good chances here that PGI could deliver something that would, and that is their goal, uh, appeal more to a, to a larger audience, whilst not scaring away, of course, the hardcore audience, but just get the game out there again into people's minds and get it, get, get it played more. Get the fan base bigger, because that is exactly what we need, and I wholeheartedly support that. McWarrior is a great IP, and more people need to know about it. What I want to do now, guys, is I want to go across a couple of websites that have covered this and talk a little bit about what, uh, what Russ has said and, of course, uh, what, those, what those websites are thinking because there's a couple of interesting bits of information in there. So let's jump into that. Of course, I'm going to be linking all these articles later on in the video description so you guys can have a look yourselves. Uh, I'm just going to quote a couple of excerpts here. So IGN is uh, saying that MechWarrior 5, while it was by most accounts a good game, its content was all procedurally generated. Uh, it was narrative driven. Um, that is actually factually wrong because MechWarrior 5 did have multiple campaigns that were narrative driven where the missions were handcrafted. So, um, yes, there were a lot of procedural fillers, filler missions, of course, but the story stuff was all handmade and not procedurally generated. So that is wrong in this article. Other than that, lots of, lots of praise, lots of good vibes going from this article, especially, again, people... Maybe they played the last Mech Warrior game since 2000 and, uh, in 2002, never touched another one, and... Now, I think, is a really, really good time to get back into it if they didn't get back in with MechWarrior 5 and Mercs earlier. Another interesting quote that I found is when they were talking about your uh, star mates, Jaden, Liam, Mia, Nazir, and Ezra. Hopefully not Ezra Bridger, because if we throw Jedi into the mix, we get a problem. Um, so Jaden is going to be the most vocal because that's your main persona. But it seems, according to the article writer, that... The Lance mates will be, and I quote, reasonably good at executing the orders if you leave the friendly AI to do the work. So here's the thing, the reason why I'm focusing on this particular part of the quote is, of course, that throughout MechWarrior 5 Mercenaries, the whole game and its DLCs have been plagued by one main issue that PGI, unfortunately, was never able to properly fix or change it for, for the better so you don't notice it anymore. And that was that the 
Landsmate AI behavior at points was bad to game-breakingly poor at some points. So I really hope that they're going to be able to get this into a better framework with uh, MacWarrior 5 Clans, because that is an, an issue that you just don't need to have, especially if it's a single-player game or story-driven story game. You don't want your landsmates to be potatoes. It's different, of course, if you play it co-op with your friends, of course, then all bets are off. But for those people who would like to enjoy the game solo or maybe just with one friend or whatnot, the AI has to work. It has to perform on a level good enough that you're not frustrated by it, right? So I really hope the PGI gets this done correctly this time. Next up is an article from PC Games. And uh, what I want to talk about right here is a quote from Russ Bullock, but also another a bit of reporting right here that is once again unfortunately wrong. And I quote, MechWarrior 5 Clans is a single-player and co-op game focused on a solitary unit or star embroiled in interplanetary battle across dozens of handcrafted maps, yes. Compared to Mercenary's expansive PvP, Clans is a purely PvE co-op experience that you can easily play solo or with four friends should you prefer. Mercenaries does not have PvP. In fact, Mercenaries specifically was made not to have PvP because the PvP portion is MechWarrior Online. That's the actual online pvp multiplayer game mechboy 5 mercenaries is solo or co-op for 99.9 percent .9 of the game and the rest was one pvp mod so that one just wanted to put it out there for correction here we have the quote from russ i think mechwarrior is more a sensation of weight and size than the faster skating style of mechs that you can see in perhaps some of the japanese games and i wholeheartedly agree with that mechwarrior is about hulking battle machines that they might be a little bit slow but just rain death upon their enemies. Uh, the quote continues, Having said that, over the last 10 years, we've made significant strides in making MechWarrior more accessible. For the first time ever in clans, it's as easily controlled with a controller as with a mouse and keyboard. That, in conjunction with the great narration, storytelling, and human characters, means that this could be the most broad-reaching MechWarrior game we've ever made. And I really hope that is going to be the case. And, of course, uh, I will try to do my part to... Talk about the game, help you guys find builds and whatnot, help you guys uh, through the, the story, play together, of course, with the audience to make sure that it's reaching as many people as possible because I am very passionate about Battletech. The article then continues talking about the uh, story and the lore about the universe, and Russ says, The lore is so deep in this universe, but you wouldn't know it to play some of the recent games. Yep, yeah, that's true because MechWarrior 5, Mercs, especially in, in, the, in the original iteration of the game, didn't really go big on lore. MechWarrior Online doesn't really go big on lore. Every time we make a new Mech Warrior, it feels like we're trying to plug whatever there is the biggest gap in the series. At one time, it was like, hey, there are no good multiplayer games here, so we made multiplayer. Yeah, that's Mech Warrior Online. Another one is having true freedom of movement, and that became Mercenaries. But with this one, we wanted to really expose the player to this deep, rich universe, and if we do that, it might excite many new players to come to Mech Warrior who have never played it before. We want to show people that this universe is really deep. Look at modern games, and people are just really interested in deep story and narration and that will, will be one of the things that draws in new players. I wholeheartedly agree. I wholeheartedly agree. And like I said before, it's really going to be important that PGI manages that properly and that they succeed in bringing MechWarrior and the whole Battletech franchise to parts of a new generation of players. Russ Feathers goes on to say that this is still a MechWarrior game through and through. Bringing people this story, it's a 40-year dream for longtime fans. They've never seen these events actually visualized and heard characters discussing these canon lore events. It's for long-term fans but more than anyone, but also perfect for newcomers as well. So here's the thing, you're going to be uh, in a star of Mech Warriors of Clan Smoke Jaguar. And if you're familiar with the lore, you know that the Smoke Jaguars are uh, fairly prominent until uh, the Inner Sphere has had enough and they decide to make an example of one of the clans and that is going to be Clan Smoke Jaguar. And uh, there is little smoke to be had for the next couple of hundred years. I'll just leave it at that. But uh, I highly recommend you guys, of course, read up on the lore. If you're interested in getting started on clan lore, or just read a couple of really well done novels, I highly recommend the uh, Jade Falcon trilogy. I'm going to put a link in the video description as well if you want to get in some reading which i highly recommend it's really nicely done and it's going to get you into the whole mood and into the whole scenery and the the setting with the clans because of course they are fairly different from the inner sphere next up is an article by mrpg and in this article they write that um clans 
aims to do something that hasn't been done in 29 years of Mech Warriors, put players right into the role of pilots in one of the many clans that comprise the universe. And yep, uh, if you think back the last time we actually saw clans was, I believe, like, properly piloted was probably like Mech Warrior 2 Mercs in uh, that kind of area. We were actually able to do that, so it's really, really nice. One part that resonates with me a lot is uh, the author saying, I remember sitting in my living room as a kid watching my dad play Mech Warrior 2 and even at times getting to sit on his lap and jump into my own dial with Mech and run around the landscape. Unsure of what I was doing, but having a blast the whole way. I remember reading a, a games magazine, it was PC Player, uh, issue 9, 1995, that actually had Mech Warrior 2 or Mech Warrior 2 Mercs on the cover, and that was what's, uh, what I was reading when I was accompanying my dad to his uh, final exams for a master's in economics. So yeah, I vividly remember reading that article over and over and over again. That just shows you that there is a fellow Mech Warrior enjoyer right here, um, speculating about the choice of which clans we will be able to pilot for, because again, Mech Warrior 5 uh, clans is going to be from the Smoke Jaguar perspective, but that doesn't mean that other clans won't make an appearance or you might be getting to play as other clan mech warriors in DLCs because, I mean, hello, Jade Falcons, Clan Wolf, anybody? Yeah, that could be very, very cool. So that is definitely future DLC opportunities galore. Also an important piece of factoid is that clans is going to be powered by Unreal Engine 5. So Mech Warrior 5 Mercs was Unreal Engine 4. This is going to be the newer Unreal Engine 5. Hopefully this time they will have better ray tracing performance as well as general game performance because it always has been a little bit of a, pro of a problem with Mac Warrior 5 Mercs. Not as much as Mac Warrior Online, but it was still there, especially if you try to use ray tracing. It is um, not the most well-running setting in the game, to put it mildly. So Unreal Engine 5, I have high hopes for ray tracing there. Plus, of course, it's going to make it easier for PGI to do all sorts of characters and character animations for their new storytelling. The article ends with this final quote that I want to read out here real quick. While this is far from a reboot of Battletech, the low runs so deep that even a Warhammer could get a run for its money, it's a nice pivot from the less accessible MechWarrior Online, yes, which is hard to get into, hence why I made so many guides, or even MechWarrior 5 Mercenaries. It feels like the developers are trying to return to the franchise uh, to its roots a bit when MechWarrior was one of the most played PC franchises yeah, out there by capturing some of that MechWarrior 2 magic. And personally, I can't wait to dive in for myself later this year. And yes, Joseph, I would 100% agree. It's a nice, well-written article. Not, not too long, guys. Highly recommend you read this one as well. Links are going to be, of course, as I already said, in the video description. The Game Rant article is also a good read. I recommend you guys have a look at that. It talks about how the new game is going to focus on cinematics, storytelling, and fleshing out a tight cast of characters, really making you build that personal connection and making you care about more than just the paint schemes, the loadouts, and the repair bills. The whole economic portion of managing your own work outfit, of course, is going to fall on the sidelines as same thing goes of course for the freely explorable uh star map you're going to be on the rails for most of it i don't know if we will get like choices between like two different missions or whatnot or the sequence of which we do these missions but it's gonna be on rails as far as i can tell and to be fair that is what they need to do in order to deliver a really cool experience in terms of a story telling perspective you'll be able to play the game with controller with mouse and keyboard and of course with hotas as well and they also stated that the whole campaign part of the game will be co-op up to five players together. Um, there won't be random matchmaking, so you will just have to invite your friends. And there is no cross-progression in co-op, so basically it is like a McWare 5 Mercs. You're going to be joining basically your host's campaign, and that person's campaign is going to be just progressing for that person. Aside from the campaign co-op, there will also be instant action co-op like in Mechware 5 Mercs as well. Customization, of course, will also be possible, so you won't be able to buy mechs and sell mechs or whatnot, but you will be able to customize your Omni mechs with different Omnipods and different weapon systems. I'm curious to see how deep that customization will go, because if you've played Mechware 5 Mercs, especially with something like the, the other, other Mech Lab mod, for example, you know that the customization can get very deep, and very interesting, and I wanted to see how deep the customization will be going. Uh, is this going to be like more Mac Warrior 5 Mercenaries style, which was extremely restrictive, or is this going to be like uh, somewhere in between the middle between Mercs and mods? We'll see. Russ also said that aside from Omnimac customization, there will be a science lab for players where they will be researching 
crook style upgrades for mech parts and chassis and there also will be a pilot xp system where people will be able to customize their star mates and grant them various skills and bonuses so that could be really really cool you could have like your your designated sniper your designated missile artillerist or whatnot if that's possible and if those bonuses then work in conjunction with the ai that would be really cool the article then closes with the question on why pgi kept mech warrior 5 in the title despite making warrior 5 clans being an entirely different setting and new game with a new engine and um apparently it was the case that early in the game's development the team was unsure how its scale would ultimately shape up to be would it just be like an oversized dlc or would it be a full-blown standalone title and because of that they went with mech warrior 5 clans instead of mech warrior 6 also, apparently licensing details with Microsoft play a role in the name as well. Well, I hope you have a better idea now what Mac Warrior 5 Clans is going to be all about. Of course, I'm going to be following the news closely and will be updating you guys as soon as I always can. Don't be freeborn filth. Make sure to leave a comment. What was actually the most interesting part for you? Let me know in the comments section below. Thank you so much, supporters. Couldn't do it without you. If you want to join Team TTB, check out the join button right here on YouTube. Super thanks button in the comment section, or of course the links to Patreon or the merch store listed in the video description.